Tonight, we are going to watch a film. Katie, what is that film? <laughs> I believe it's called Red Line. Red Line! What do you know about Red Line? Really nothing? Uh, all, all we know, because we've seen the trailer, we know it's an anime. It's about race car drivers and a race. Yes. That's it. I'm in danger. We just watched Red Line. <laughs> that was certainly a movie. Oh my goodness. We're going to be breaking down the different aspects of the movie, different categories, enjoyability, visuals, acting, sound, and story. It's going to be completely spoiler free until we hit story, and then we'll let you know if you don't want spoilers, where you can skip ahead in the video to just see our final thoughts on it and miss those spoilers entirely. But until then, like I said, spoiler free. We're just going to rank everything on a scale of one to five. One being unwatchable, two being not great, three being pretty good, four being awesome, and five being perfect. So we'll start off with enjoyability. Three and a half. It was really fun, it was really pretty, it, the story was decent, it was weird and entertaining. I gave it a five. There was not a moment when I was not either enjoying myself or completely, thoroughly baffled. I was never bored. The entire movie is ADHD to a fault. <laughs> but in terms of how much I enjoyed it, it was perfection. Visuals. Four. I gave it a four as well. It's a super, super stylish movie. If you like the look of it, you'll love it. If you don't, you're really, you're gonna hate it because that's what this movie's got going for it. Yeah, I only didn't give it a five because it had a lot of sexual stuff. Yeah. Like, Unnecessary. The movie has a big problem with the male gaze. It's not equal opportunity. There was like a lot of male butt shots at the very beginning, and I was like, nice! Yeah, but that, <laughs> then it goes downhill. <laughs> goes downhill real fast from there. Uh, acting, I just went three because yeah. it's an animated movie and middle of the line seemed good. Yep, I gave it a three as well. Seemed fine, sound. Three and a half. I didn't really hate anything, but nothing stuck out. The music was very cheese ball and in your face, but everything else about the movie is too, so. Yeah. I also gave the sound a three. I, I really loved the little themes they gave each character. That was pretty cool. <laughs> now we're gonna talk about the story. So if you wanna skip spoilers, then skip ahead to the time code shown on the screen. Oh, okay, go. Okay, so the story is there is a race. It's an illegal race taking place on a planet where the planet has not given them permission to have this race because they don't want people to find out about their secret crazy weapons that they have. Even though they're super peace-focused, supposedly. Supposedly. Uh, but the race takes place anyway, illegally, and we follow our two protagonists, kind of? Uh, they're mixed up in the mob, then he also has a love interest who's another racer. Everything you think is going to happen does happen. The race takes place, the government fights it, so it's like a war, and the race and of course the, the two fall in love somehow and the good guy finishes the race and they end up destroying the mob very easily and that was very easy there's there's nothing about the story that's at all as interesting as the visuals and the crazy character designs and the insane fast-paced jokes it's just yeah the movie keeps your attention, but it's not the story. For sure, yeah. Yeah, I give the story to, the story was not great, but it didn't need to be. Honestly, with so much going on, if the story was very complicated, it really would have worked to the detriment of its own movie. So in my view, a two is not bad in this case. For that same reason, I actually gave the story a three. I thought if it was any more complicated, it would just be too much. There were already too many little side stories that could have happened. Overall, this is my final score. This is KD's final score. IMDB's final score. Rotten Tomatoes final score. Final thoughts? Um, it was really fun. I, I definitely enjoyed it. Yeah, I... And super weird. There was like another design style at like one scene with a really uncalled for statement. Like it just Laugh awkward, out loud funny. Like, but like a lot, like super awkward. You're just like, what was this? Yes. Shot. Where did that come from? This is an uncomfortable movie, but hmm, it leans so far into the awkwardness of its own jokes that it almost comes out the other end into being legitimately hilarious. Yeah. So I'm, I have no idea like 
how to feel about this movie. I didn't know how to feel about the movie while watching it. Yeah. If you just want to have an insane time with a bunch of friends and just laugh at a ridiculous, over-the-top, obnoxious, in-your-face movie, this might be a good call. Uh, if you're looking for a fun animated flick for your next family movie night, this is not it. Yeah, There's no. <laughs> nudity, there's all kinds of swearing, it's pretty graphic at points. Uh, this, it's not meant for kids. For our purposes, I loved watching it. Mm. Probably never gonna watch it again, but it was a ton of fun. I would watch it if someone else asked if we could all watch it. Okay. Yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. Um, it felt kind of like if the craziest parts of Paprika were mixed with the live action Speed Racer. Yes. Mixed with certain points of Cowboy Bebop, the show. Okay. So it's like if that was all one unit, but crazier, this would be that movie. There you go. Redline, have you seen it? What did you think? Let us know in the comments. Any movies that are similar or have a similar vibe that we might dig, let us know. You know, we, we're always up for something weird. For sure. Well. Hey, thanks for watching that video. If you liked what you saw, give us a like. If you didn't, don't. We rotate through a series of shows, so there's always something new for you. We also have two stores. There's the Hungry Creature Boutique and the Cool People Cool Store. Also, if you like the music you heard in this episode, check out Fractal Impulse on Facebook and Bandcamp and Instagram, whatever social media, and all that stuff. Yeah, cool, bye.